My name is Terry Shepard, and I will be your guide into the world of close quarter battle. I'm a current U.S. Army Green Beret, and I have fought in two armed conflicts in the Middle East. Together, we'll explore how elite soldiers and police units use these specific techniques to defeat their enemies at very close range. The term close quarter battle is used to describe scenarios that police and military face in both urban and rural environments. Although the origin of close quarter battle goes back to sword fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, today it's used primarily to describe the techniques when small teams are confronting an enemy inside a building or within a compound. Stairwells, hallways, and rooms always pose dangerous and unknown variables. From basic muzzle awareness, weapons transitions, to silent team communication, all police and military units need to be expert in the techniques of close quarter battle. In today's episode, we will learn how the key to gaining the element of surprise in any close quarter battle situation is getting accurate information about your target. We will also take a look at the concept of breaching through dynamic entry. This is the term that military and police use to describe entering a building or room using shotguns and explosive shape charges to blow down a barricaded door or wall to gain elements of surprise, speed, and violence of action. I will give you an historical overview of the formation of police rapid response units and their use of military concepts and tactics. We will see inside the head of a rapid response unit team member and feel how maintaining surprise, speed, and violence of action in close quarter battle through weapons awareness, field of fire, and coordinated team communication and movement is the key to a successful CQB operation. Finally, I will be on a live fire demonstration in what's called a kill house with a police rapid response unit as we move through working room by room to overwhelm the space and take out any threats. The formation of a SWAT team in LA County really marked the development of tactical response units all across the United States. SWAT in LA really kind of took a blending of military concepts and law enforcement concepts and made them very effective for where they are. LA is a dangerous place. Something I admire about those guys is that not only do they have to get in the target and successfully take care of business there. They're surrounded by a civilian population, not all of them friendly, but definitely all of them cannot be hurt. So they're able to surgically complete a mission that's difficult at best and dangerous at worst. The history of elite police close quarter battle techniques starts by looking at how police faced challenges like riots and civil unrest and then began adopting military style tactics and weapons. In the 1970s, elite military units influenced police units in Northern California, which resulted in LA County forming the first SWAT teams. As international criminal organizations and terrorists became more sophisticated, police organizations all over the world had to adopt more of these military close quarter battle techniques. One of the most important things a SWAT team absolutely has to do is get dynamic entry. Whether it's a shotgun blast, a charge, or a battering ram, it's vitally important that those guys get inside quickly and aggressively. So whether it's a military unit or some police force around the United States, surprise, speed, and violence of action, principles of CQB that will win the day for them. When preparing to enter a suspected drug dealer's apartment, there are various methods of entry available to them. The three primary methods of dynamic breaching are, one, shotgun, using specialized shotgun rounds to attack either the lock or the hinges, 
using carefully placed and measured explosives to defeat the lock, hinges, or even cave in the door itself. And three, swinging a battering ram to hit near the lock assembly of the door, shattering the lock and pushing the door open. It was 9-11 that really highlighted just how vulnerable we are. Even the smallest police department has its own tactical response unit, as well as our national assets. All of them have to be able to deal with chemical attacks, biological attacks, nuclear attacks, and of course, shootings and explosives. All of these assets, from local all the way to national, are in communication and mutually benefit from training. But all of them have one thing in common. Every one of them, in order to be effective and protect the population, has to be good at CQB. Now let's take a look at information and intelligence gathering and their different means. First and foremost is human-based intel gathering, where operatives or officers are undercover in civilian clothes, observing the target area or personality and reporting back to command. Another form of surveillance in modern close quarter battle is technically assisted, where unmanned aerial vehicles, closed circuit cameras, GPS tracking and audio bugging equipment is utilized to design a clear plan of assault on the CQB target. Because of the nature of, of where we are and who we're talking to, I can't tell you his name and I can't let you get a look at him, but I'm really excited because I'm gonna get a tour inside one of their tactical surveillance vans. Give me a little tour about what you guys have here and the capabilities of this. So just now we are in the mobile communication and observation spot, which is for reading of undercover and open operations. We are able to communicate on different levels. We have a main communication radio for command staff, additional radios for negotiation and snipers, and additional radio for communication with other police branches. Now, how many guys normally would you have in this van for, for an operation? For common operation, it's three men inside this car, and uh, usually we have a negotiator, tactical commander, and a sniper team leader. I think also people think that surveillance is this kind of cool, glamorous job. It's a lot of hard work, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, sometimes in the in the bad environment, long stay in the in the in the forest, raining, cold. We're cold. Yeah. You have to eat. You have to go to the bathroom. Thanks for letting me see this, man. Awesome. Coming up, I'm gonna observe some kill house flow drills. I'm gonna take a look at the plate and load bearing vest of an elite police operator. Then I go down range with the H and K MP5 nine mm submachine gun. Today, we are looking at police rapid response tactics for close quarter battle and how surveillance, weapons training, and gaining dynamic entry all allow control of surprise, speed, and violence of action. A kill house is a live fire training area used by police and military to do what's called flow drills. The area is usually built out of tires or rubber padded walls that ensure stray bullets do not ricochet back into the officers as they move to clear rooms and practice CQB. CQB is extremely dangerous, and it's actually pretty dangerous to train if you want to train it to a high level. What we're doing today is working as a team in what we call flow drills, going through the target and taking it down, but without ammo or explosives, yet. The idea behind a kill house came from the military and police understanding that in real world hostage or building assault situations, there is a need for operators to feel comfortable in close quarter battles with weapons firing and explosives detonating right next to them and all around them.
So that was great watching those guys flow. Um, very deliberate flow. Uh, something I don't usually see in my line of work in the military is they had a guy with a big heavy shield up front the whole time. It makes a lot of sense if you can have that and you know you've got bad guys in here that are gonna try to kill you. A lot of it's the same kind of stuff. Same principles. One, two, aggressively move forward. They have to hold on a door. They used flashbangs when they lost their momentum. It's gonna be great. Okay, so I'm in an undisclosed location in the Czech Republic at the Urna training compound. Urna stands for Utvar Rychleho Nasazani. This is the national police force of the Czech government. This is pretty much the most elite unit for dealing with terrorist activity and pretty much a lot of other missions. I'm with one of their best weapons instructors. You've got a few of them here, so what's this first one? This is MP5 in K version. Yeah, this is a, this is a shorter barrel. H and K MP5, we know, some people don't know, it shoots nine millimeter. And uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a shorter barrel. So is the accuracy gonna go down on this a little bit? Uh, not so much, probably. No, not so much. So this is perfect for close in work. And I'm a lefty, so I get to eat all the gas that comes flying out here, which is pretty, pretty cool. This has got a selector switch for single, three round burst, and uh, full auto. So you have a lot of different options. And we have no optics on this, but these are very easy to control. I haven't shot an MP5 in a long time, uh, quite some time, but I know that they're pretty easy to control. Pull them in, nine millimeter, boom. All right, so of course, the minute anybody like me gets in, gets in the same room with a piece of kit, we've gotta try it on, see if we like it. So, feels right, that's about the right heft. It's got the protective plates and the soft armor. Lots of Velcro to get in and out quickly. This is a very familiar feeling. Getting kitted up, locking it down, and I'm ready to go. There's a few things you can see here immediately. This is a right-handed shooter. His holster's here for quick access. He can draw it and shoot. I'm left-handed, mine would be over here. He's got his radio. He's got various magazine pouches. You'll see here a metal cable. Very important because this is actually a breakaway piece of body armor. If I need to get out of this quickly, for example, my vehicle gets pushed in the water and I'm drowning, I need to get out of this quickly. I could pull a handle and it breaks away. Also, in the event that I'm wounded, my comrades can get to me a lot quicker. Key thing about any kind of kit, the operator's gotta know where everything is instinctively. So before you take this into combat, you need to train with it over and over and over again. Coming up, we go inside the head of an LA County SWAT team member as they take down a drug lab. Then we take a look at the MP5 and the shotgun. In today's episode, we are looking at police rapid response unit close quarter battle tactics and how surprise, speed, and violence of action are maintained by strict weapon control, team movement, and dynamic entry. Jumping into the head of a rapid response unit member while training in a kill house gives you an idea of how operators do flow drills and gain awareness of their team movement and weapon control. Assault teams will train in the kill house over and over to ensure that all these elements are under their control in a real world scenario. And they operate with confidence and keep themselves and their teammates alive. When a team moves toward a target, they must commit to all the three principles of close quarter battle. By moving with stealth through various cover and hidden positions, they maintain the element of surprise. With a constant pace in formation, they maintain the element of speed. And finally, with a sudden coordinated attack, they commit to the violence of action required to dominate the assault. With helmet and gun cameras attached to this rapid response team, we get to feel how it feels to be making fraction of second decisions that keep you, your team, and any civilians in the area alive. When moving toward a target, team members hold their weapons with a muzzle pointed in the direction of travel and slightly down to allow for unobstructed vision. 
Also, the muzzle is always oriented to where the soldier is looking. Actions outside the point of entry must be quick and well rehearsed because the doorway or breach point is always a dangerous position. Now I'm back on the range doing some test shooting and getting the lowdown on this anti-terror unit's use of the MP5. Then we're gonna shoot it. This is my personal MP5 in A5 type. Yeah. Is this your weapon? Yeah. This is yours? All right, thank you for, thank you for bringing it out for show and tell, man. Yeah, uh, with Eotech, all side, and uh, laser and the light. I see, okay, feel weight, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's ah, that's nice. That's that's good. Come in, boom. Yeah, dead on. Yeah, and plus that, uh, the MP5 are all a chamber for nine yeah. millimeters, so it's um it's a very easy round to control, yeah. and also for you guys, it's not so much penetration. Uh, but it's perfect in the cities when we are taking somebody on streets, we have to control other people. Well, you guys have to, you know, you guys are always, you know, as, as police officers, you guys are always worried about the civilians in and around the area. And if you don't want a, a bullet whipping through something, yeah, I get it. All right, so now we've got, uh, this we've is got our shotgun. Benelli shotgun. Yeah, Benelli. We use it for entry. Do you guys use that to breach doors? Yes, to shoot off some pants or rocks. We use it in manual mode. Okay, but it also that could also go to like a semi mode too, right? Yes, it is. Uh, you can switch it uh, to the semi mode, and then it will cycle for you, right? Or to do manual. Got it. Yeah, when you're doing when you're doing breaching, you want to have it on manual, always. So I think it's time to shoot them. Coming up, I'm gonna jump into the Kill House flow drills and test my skills out. Then we'll revisit our real world rapid response scenarios with a better understanding of what's involved in a high stakes, life or death, close quarter battle situation. Today we're training some of the basic police CQB tactics from Kill House live fire drills, weapons training, and dynamic entry. So I've had a chance to watch these guys flow and it's pretty much the same way we do things too. The principles are awfully close. So I'm gonna plug myself into the stack. In this case, I'm gonna start in the back. But once we get in there and start moving through and pr problems present and we go in different directions, it'll change. This is gonna be a lot of fun. My job now is to cover rear security until we get in. Breaching techniques vary widely based on the type of construction encountered and the types of explosives available to the breaching force. What we see here is a shape charge, which is basically four pieces of wood connected with explosives on the side facing the door. Then a long detonation cord is attached so that the team can be a safe distance away from the explosion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
Once inside the kill house, all my CQB training comes back to me and I fall into my position in the stack. Starting out as the last man, I'm responsible for rear security, but as we move through, my position changes and I have to commit to room clearing and door security with the rest of the guys. As rooms get cleared and flashbangs fly, everyone has to maintain as much silent communication as possible. Finally, the entire kill house is quiet as all of us start to replay how the assault unfolded and how accurate our shots were. In this episode, we were looking at police rapid response tactics. As we revisit our real world scenarios, we can now better appreciate how important gaining dynamic entry strict weapon control and team movement are to the three main rules of CQB, surprise, speed, and violence of action. The entire team enters the room quickly and smoothly and clears the doorway immediately. Because the door is always the focal point for anyone inside the room, focusing attention here is crucial for a successful CQB operation. Police, police. In the case of countering terrorist attacks, all rapid response team members must move as one unit and know exactly what their responsibility within their team is. Repeated and realistic training enables teams to move forward with speed and with primary concern for the safety of their team members and any potential civilian casualties or hostages. Once the target has been located, bystander civilians are separated from the hostages and targets. The actual event of violence of action can be over in a matter of seconds. In today's episode, we learned about the creation of rapid response in urban police units and how they need to be experts in military style close quarter battle and weaponry. We also learned how training with submachine guns and real explosives inside a live fire kill house allows rapid response teams to stay in control of all three principles of CQB, surprise, speed, and violence of action.